So, we've had a look at some basic corrections and I want to move away from the basic corrections now and get a little bit more specialist. Um, so, I'm just going to collapse my basic menu by clicking on that tiny little triangle arrow thing. Um, by the way, each of these uh, adjustments has a little eye icon and if I click and hold on it I can see what it looks like with and without the changes and get a feel for whether I actually like these changes whether I feel they are going in the right direction. So the next place I want to go to is the color mixer. We'll come back to curve and detail in um, uh, in due course, but I'm going to come down to the color mixer and here I have um, three different sets of sliders. So there's three tabs here, hue, saturation and luminance. Um, now each of these uh, tabs has a slider for reds, oranges, yellows, greens, aquas, blues, purples and magentas. And I'm going to start with the middle one, saturation. Now remember that saturation is essentially how intense a color is. Sort of, you're, it's like a slider moving from a pastel to a neon. Um, and one of the key image, colors in this image is red, obviously, because this woman has this sort of red uh, headscarf. Um, and so that red slider, if I start pulling that around, it's only going to affect the red in the image. So this is what I was talking about being more selective when you adjust colors. So if I want to make this red brighter, I can without changing anything else. Um, so these are very, very powerful sliders. They allow me to be very, very particular about the colors that I want to change. So that's saturation, but how do hue and luminance work here? Well, luminance I'll go to first. Luminance is how dark or light that color is. So I can, as well as increasing its intensity, increase its lightness or um, darken it off. For now, I'm just going to leave this male double click in the middle. Might come back to it later. And, rain it in a bit. And then hue is an interesting one because hue actually allows us to change the color itself. So this will take any reds in the image and I can start to make those reds more uh, pinky purple or more yellow. So that's really quite a powerful tool. But again, generally might not need to use it that much. I do find myself using it on greens quite a lot, particularly in nature shots, because sometimes greens can be a little bit sickly. Uh, and working with the greens um, in this way, I can get them feeling a little bit more lush. So do I want to change the color of my red at all? Maybe there. I feel like maybe I'll just knock it down a tiny bit. Do I want to change the luminance at all? I don't know that I do. I've ended up back at zero, haven't I? Do I want to increase that saturation at all? Probably, probably not. I don't want to push it too hard. So if I compare image on the left to image on the right, that headscarf pops a bit more, but hopefully not too much. Although, you know, I might look at this again and think, ugh, I've done it far too much. Obviously, we can apply this same process to any color in the image. And the other key colors here are the yellows, the gold of the jewelry, and subtle, but there, she appears to have some kind of purple nails on. So what happens when I move the purple sliders up? Those nails become less or more saturated. As they're just in the background, I can actually hit those quite hard. So I'm going to gonna pimp the saturation on that a little bit. And let's find where we're getting the most change on the jewelry. Ah, now see this orange. This orange is really having a big impact on the image. A tremendous impact. Um, and that's going to be crucial to controlling her skin tone.